Hi everyone, so in today's video I'll be trying out some of Spellbinder's new um, sets or kits for the month of April 2024. I already did a whole unboxing, the um, Deluxe Caboodle, and I will link that video in the description box so you guys can check that out to see more about sizing other things like that. And usually in these subsequent videos I just get right to it. So um, yeah, so that's what we'll be doing today. So these items initially were sent free of charge from my review, and of course all opinions are my own. And any links down in the description box will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you're purchased items through those links. I get samples, and this is kind of what they look like. Some of them are packaged the way you will receive them, and some of them are just kind of loose or not any packaging at all. But of course when you receive yours at home, it'll be nicely packaged and all that. If you uh, become a member and keep that you know, throughout the month, you'll receive 10% off your purchases on Spellbinders, and then they have like... Um, kind of like member appreciation things throughout the year so you guys can check those out but today I think uh, I'll try out the embossing folder of the month the faux stitch petal again oversized embossing folder and that's what that looks like but this is their standard embossing folder as far as uh, they have 3d types this is the standard embossing folder uh, of the month um, I think I'll mix in the wax seal why not and this month it's really cute it has like the little cross stitch like heart in there it's a circular uh, seal um, it's going to come with cloud sky uh, or cloudy sky. Um, it's possible the color will change, but this is what um, was slated for the month. I will say, because a lot of times with the glimmer uh, of the month, you do get a foil roll, and then if you were to get the glimmer later, like, you know, next month after it's been done for the month, you know what I'm saying, like, let's say you get April's in May or something, like, in May you just pick up the April kit, it will just be the plates and the dies, but no foil, and I recently learned that, same thing with the wax seal, I wasn't sure, I think I mentioned before, I said, oh, I don't know if it's actually just going to be the seal or if it comes with um, melts, the beads at the time. So, let's say you like this it gets away from you this month and a couple months down the road you see it and you pick it up it will not come with the wax beads so that's just another perk as a monthly member or if you sign up for that month you'll get the uh, wax beads essentially for free because they usually the price is a little bit higher and then it doesn't come with the seal with the beads anymore and since the glimmer the price will be a little bit higher and it won't come with the foil so something to think about so now i know that and i will try and mention that for the next few months so people will have that info and then I think I'll play with the large die of the month, which is super cute. Uh, it's called Pins and Needles Jar. And in, when I did this, you know, uh, unboxing video initially, I was like, oh, that reminds me. I have some jars from like a vintage estate sale I went to. Oh my gosh, probably over 20 years ago now that I think about it. Um, and I had got... I had received or picked up or bought actually I bought a sewing machine <laughs> with a cabinet and everything and it's a really beautiful vintage sewing machine and in there um, it had a couple of jars which I didn't realize till I got home and so one of the cabinets had this jar in it and I had mentioned that I had some jars just like this um, super cute I mean look at the glass on this super old and I have not played with anything that's in here I haven't touched it it's just a lot of old like buttons and you know just a lot of things in here and then um, the other one is more of a ball jar that has a metal lid that's all one piece and I know now you can take it apart and like do this kind of thing but it was one piece that I'm sure I shouldn't be touching anymore <laughs> thing but um, it has like zippers and other cute buttons and things in it and so I just grabbed this one really quickly to show you but I thought that was kind of funny because it's basically you know there's I see needles in here I see some pins safety pins um, you know all kinds of of items so I just want to share that with you guys because I always keep it here just because it's pretty and I like to look at it you know over there with my sewing stuff but anyhow today we'll make our own but from paper so uh, lots of fun things going on here I'm just gonna grab some different papers and get started let's get a card base going um, you know our background and then I'll just start cutting things up I mean obviously we're gonna have different you know your scissors with the handle Made different from the blade part, little pins, safety pins that are open, some are closed, there's buttons, there's thimbles. I mean, I went through all these things before. So we'll just get right to it. So I will be right back. Okay, so just to begin, I'm going to make my own card bases, A2 size cardstock. So I'm just going to cut that at five and a half, score it at four and a quarter. And then I'm going to cut a piece, so five and a half. And then I'll cut a piece of cardstock that will run through the embossing folder. Uh, score this at four and a quarter in the other direction. So standard A2 size card. I'll cut a piece of paper that is four and eighth by five and three eighths because I like an eighth matte layer. I like to keep it nice and tight. I used to do five by four and a, by five and a quarter by four or four by five and a quarter, whatever you like, or the whole mat, right? Um, so take this guy, go to five and three eighths. This is 
a four size paper so if you notice it might be a little funky in the sizing already I feel like it's a little beat up there I'm gonna trim that off and then trim it off again so just take that piece of the paper off because it's a little funky looking by four and one eighth in the other direction I'm going to run this through your standard embossing folder and I will be right back just kind of eyeballing where that should be a little bit centered in the design my back okay. and full disclosure in case I don't get through this video today I have an appointment I gotta get my center ready for so um, I'm gonna do as much as I can maybe my sleeves will change sometimes that happens I'll film an intro or get as far as I can until I have to go do something else and so there you go um, okay let's put this over here and I am just going to glue that down so just put a little glue on the back of that and look at how cool that is it's very almost 3d looking this one lovely I'll be right back this might be weird but I was wondering and I totally forgot to check I think this is taller than five and a half just the size of it it looks pretty big and if I look at this card it is but I thought you know what let's just play it that up and let it have its little pins and things sticking out the top why not right so I'm still leaving it on this five by seven card base four by six would be a good size for it um, but just know this guy's a big boy. He can probably make his own uh, shape card really nicely because it's a nice big size. But um, yeah, so okay, let me think. So if this is going to be, I'll probably cut it from white paper, you know. So this from some kind of silver colored paper. We can do a little topper bit that's maybe some cute like pattern paper. So it looks like a little piece of fabric that we had put in there. You know, if you're making your own with like little stuffing. So some pattern paper. And then everything else I'm just going to cut. I don't know, out of fun things. So like maybe like a bronze color or gold or something, maybe some silver, right? So we can put that together. And, you know, silvery colors or whatever colors you like for your pins, if you want to do that. We have our thimble. These little pieces here are what finish off your little floss. Isn't that cute? They're so cute. Oh my gosh. Um, these little areas are what goes on the floss in there. So probably some black paper. You know, if you want to make like a bobbin, like this kind of thing, you have a thread that you can cut out and you have a bobbin background, like a fist from paper, so whatever color. You know, we have a buttons, we have thread that can come from our needles, all that fun stuff. So um, I'm just going to cut and I'll be back. cute things look at this even this guy um, on the button it has like a little piece that helps you decorate your pin so I think for that one I'm just gonna leave it with that bronze I might run the button through a couple more times I just ran it through once but we got that little bronze piece at least I do this guy it comes from the button and it can go on your pin and then I'm just going to glue together some of these other pieces <laughs> cute oh my gosh um, this here we have the little, I ran it through black paper, so we have this. Now, I suppose you can run it through the same color paper, because it could just, it doesn't really have to be like a f embroidery floss skein. It could be kind of like, um, I'm trying to see if they have to fit exactly somewhere, or if, yeah, that looks good. Um, I mean, it could be like the floss itself is wrapped around itself, right? So we have that, so I'll glue those down. Uh, we have this with this. I mean, this already looks like it has a little something on it, but I don't know if it matches up a certain way yep perfect <laughs> so we'll just glue that down um, 
I have a little pink thread from the same pink for our needle that's going to be kind of popped on top. I did cut this out twice because I was thinking if I want, I don't know if I'm going to pop it up from the card base so it kind of stands alone. So I ran it through a couple times. So I'm going to just put these guys together. Um, I really wanted to do something with like, what's that stuff called? Um, acetate. Wouldn't that be cute? To actually make it like clear plastic. If I were going to do that, I don't know. I was thinking acetate, put the silver piece, put this piece, and this would be clear, and then maybe only glue it down up on the top and then put everything else underneath, but it's not really glued down. You know what I'm saying? So you won't see the glue bothering the acetate. Or just be really careful with it. I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to put these things together, put this guy together, you know, go ahead and put this on here. I don't know if I'm going to stick this one down until I see where the pins are. I might put the pins in between the two layers. So um, I'm just going to arrange everything the way it needs to if it needs any assembly, and I'll be right back. our pieces let's bring this over and if we have it popped up something like that and like I said maybe make it look like the pins are actually in this little guy like in here like that that'd be cute okay so let's put something like that and you can definitely double up your pins also if you're doing something like this especially since it's sticking off the, our card you know or if you make like a shape card uh, you can run it through some white paper a couple times or something just to make that a little sturdier uh, maybe I'll make it look like this one is also okay let's bring this over hmm let me see how that looks most natural <laughs> something like that So it's kind of poking in there. I'm going to hold that down. And then this guy will set up with the little thread and kind of put it in here. I'm just holding that down for now. Oh, you know, while I'm doing that, might as well hold this guy down too, I suppose. A little bit. Just putting a little glue behind it to hold that down. Okay, guys. I'll be so I was thinking about popping this up just to keep it off of the card base. So I'm going to go ahead and put some dimensionals on the back of this here and all around here and I'll bear back. Just put some dimensions all behind there. And I'm gonna put this right at the center, maybe a little bit up. Here. I haven't put any of this stuff in. Of course you can fill it in first and then you know do what you're gonna do. But I kinda wanna have a better idea of what's going on here. <laughs> Cute. Oh my gosh, maybe this back here. I want the scissors to show more. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I mean, it's kind of sitting on top. I feel like I need to involve acetate. <laughs> but that's all right. Okay. Let's glue this guy. Oh, look how intricate these are, too. It has like a cutout in the middle there. So pretty. Oh, I should have brought my little scissors that I have that are just like these. Got a big pack of them, like on Amazon, to look cute. <laughs> and, um,. So let's say this was in here like that. I'm gonna hold that down because it's gonna need a little time to hold down. And I'll kind of plan where these other bits need to go. And that'll be that. I'm sure these are just gonna be kind of scattered in here. Right? Something like that. I don't know. <laughs> just tossed in there. The needle's gonna go at the top, and then I have a little thimble just because it was from the other piece. Obviously, the thimbles are usually like silver, but you know, sometimes there are other colors. So maybe put that one there. Yeah, I like where everything else is. So I'm just gonna start putting some glue and just glue them down, guys. Um, nice and flat. Let's put that on top of there to hold the handle down because it was popping up on me. Everything else is just glued down. And let's check this guy out. Cute. Oh my gosh. That's adorable. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, let me see. 
I want to do this. It's very delicate. Maybe something there, something here, some on the string itself. I don't know. Let's see how we can do this to look. It's right in there. <laughs> Super delicate, you guys. Ooh, okay, I'm going to hold that down and I'll be back. Okay, guys, so as I said, I would probably take a pause and come back to finish it up. And so, sat here overnight, and I mean, the card is adorable just like this. You know, you open it up, look how cute. <laughs> I mean, even that. Um, but I want to go ahead and finish off with a wax seal, and maybe a better press sentiment. I don't, I'm not sure on the sentiment part yet, just because I was thinking about what I've used already this month. We did the stamp, I think we used some other things, but maybe the better press. I do have it here with me. The Glimmer also has sentiments, but you know, sending stitchy hugs. Cute things like that. Stitched uh, just for you. Best stitches on your birthday. And I was thinking maybe we can put that on the inside. A lot of times what I'll do something like this is I'll cut it straight, use my wax seal to hold it down, you know, to look like it's coming out of it. But I think maybe we can pop that on the inside. The images here some of them are very similar, like the scissors and the little spool of thread. What I love about this month is that it is a registration set, so um, you can do this little guy and then add um, a color with the second one, or with that second part portion of it. it looks like a little bobbin here. But anyhow, so uh, yeah, let's do our wax seal. And hopefully it works out well for me today. I know last month it was pretty chilly in here. And I could tell something was up with the wax. Like it was just different, you know, as I was working with it. Um, and I had to use five beads, which isn't normal. I usually use four, even for, you know, one inch seal. And um, I think it was just because it was chilly in here. I might put some metallic bic over that. Oh, did I pull that out? I did. Okay. Uh, let's get these guys ready. So I'll use four and see if that works, but apparently the temperature in your house can also do some stuff. <laughs> so um, let's get four of them. And my Snoop Dogg lighter began working again. That's because I bought it when I saw it at the grocery store. I thought it'd be funny to have it in my crafting videos and have a lighter with Snoop Dogg on it. Um, and there he is. But it wasn't working for me oh, last time too well. Okay. So, let's get this guy. I guess, why not? If Martha Stewart can work with him, you know, and be in my uh, crafty videos. So, we have this guy ready. I'm going to let that melt down. I don't know if you can see, it's already kind of melting on the edges. It doesn't take too, too long. Um, but I'll be right back. In the meantime, I was cutting down some paper to go on the inside of the card, because I think what I'll do is I'll do a better press sentiment, and then just pop it inside the card. So, have all that ready. Grab my ink and everything, ready to go. That looks pretty melty. Sorry, I have a cough drop in my mouth. And I can see that there's some purple from before. And that's fine. I didn't do the best job cleaning that off. But really make sure this is molten, you know? And that's another thing. If you still see, like, the shape of the little guys and it's still kind of thick, don't use it yet. Just make sure it's really melted down. Obviously, you don't want it bubbling because then it can scorch. But I think that's going to be good. And I do kind of pour it out in a circular fashion. If it's an oval shape, I'll pour it out in an oval fashion and... Square shape, same thing. I kind of pour it out in a square way. Get as much as you can. And since I'm going to just pop it onto my project afterward, I don't really care where this... If it's upside down or anything like that. But look at that. Not bad. Nice and perfect circle around there. If you're going to keep making them, you know, throw in the next set of four. But if not, wipe it out now. And right now that it's wet... Let me see. Um, it's just easier to clean it out. So, unless you don't mind and you want to leave it there for next time. Because that is a good amount of wax, you know. Um, you leave it there for next time and go from there. But if you wipe it while it's still pretty wet, you can pretty much clean it up very easily. So there it is, ready to go for the next time. I'll leave that for you know, 30 seconds, a minute. Okay. I'll be back. I think it should be ready. Oh my gosh, look how nice and pronounced that is. Very cute, really perfect. Sometimes you have some lettering, if it's very fine, you'll miss a little spot or something just happens and, you know, you can just redo it. Or not use that one, or use that one, and it doesn't matter. It's, you know, organic. But I'm going to take a metallic marker and just use it on the side. You don't use the tip, because if you use the tip, you can basically fall in to where you're coloring. So if you keep this tilted to the side and just go over the edges, you know, the very top of what you just did, it just helps the image pop. So I'll just finish that up, and I'll be right back. Let's turn it a little towards... 
where I need it to be. There we go. And that is really quite perfect. So there we go. Cutie pie. We'll add that in here somewhere just to be cute. Oh my gosh. I mean, I was thinking also, you know, since we're using like threads and things, it'd be cute to use a little bit of maybe twine or something. A little bow coming off of that, you know, something cute. It can just be kind of hanging off. I might even leave it hanging off like that just so it's more obvious that it's its own thing. Okay. Uh, better press. I grabbed this. This is four and a quarter by five and a half. I'll probably trim it down. A lot of times if I'm going to use this to do something where maybe it ends up being a little bit crooked and I want to straighten it out, I'll use a bigger piece of paper that I'm going to trim down. So we have that. And let's say sending stitchy hugs. That's cute. And I mean, you can use one of these accents too. Hmm. I was just going to put the sentiment in here. Uh, let's, and I'm just using the grid lines to help me kind of see left and right, and obviously what would be straight. Uh, let's use this little icon, why not? And maybe kind of, let's see, like down in here. I am possibly going to trim this down, right? So I'd want it to still be in wherever it is that I'm going to put that. Maybe down like this. So let me grab a color for that. I just decide to use that guy. <laughs> so I just need like, oh, you know what? Let's do the gray. So it kind of just fades back a little bit. Oh, let me make sure that's not going to go anywhere. Okay. And again, my piece of cardstock here, and this is just heavyweight cardstock. And I always have all the three shims that the battle press came with. I have this at four and a quarter by five and a half. Knowing I'll probably trim that down. Oopsie. You can also do this gray at the tip and then maybe the handles like the bronze color or whatever color. I just kind of want it to fade back. So there's that guy. And then I'm using French blue for the actual sentiment. Again, I don't want that to move really, but if it does, I'll ink it up again. Some good amount of ink on that. They're both light colors, so there you go. And I'm going to run this through my uh, Platinum 6. I'll be right back. And here it comes. What I like about this is it doesn't press down until it has to. Oh, that is so cute. And you know what? I totally forgot. It's going to be the opposite of where you put it. So like that, I laid it this way because I thought that'd be cute. But when you flip it, it's going to lay the other way, which is fine. But for me, I would have liked it coming this way. But look how pretty that is. And again, the whole better pressing just really pushes it in there. That's pretty straight. So I'm still going to cut some off. Four and an eighth by five and three eighths because that's the kind of matte layer I like. And I'll be right back. So just trim that down. But again, you know, you're using your precision dies. If it's crooked for some reason, you can kind of manipulate your die in a way that'll look at it straight and then pass it through, right? So something to think about. And so let's just pop this guy in here. Really cute. And of course, with the better press set, you also have the dies that'll cut out the bobbin, the thimble, and the scissors. So if you want to do that, you can cut those out. And then you have all your sentiments. How cute is that? Sending stitchy hugs. And then this little guy. Mm, I'll probably put him a little bit crooked. So I want to make sure I have glue on this side. It's going to take a little second to set up, but there we go. And kind of popped over to the side so it's obvious that it's its own little thing. And there it is, guys. So <laughs> embossing folder of the month. Uh, we have the large die of the month. We have the wax seal of the month. And your better press is in here also. So um, really decked out on that one. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you so much, Spellbinders, for today's items for review. I'll have images coming up. I'll have the links in the description box. And I will see you all at the next one. Oh, how cute to cut this out of felt. Oh, my gosh, guys. So many ideas. Anyway, I'll see you <laughs> by now.